What's going on, good people, engineers? What is up? Um, I was sitting at home and I was thinking about a segment to do a couple weeks back. And um, one thing that I think is very important and very relevant to all of us is is knowing what to do with your home studio. A lot of you guys listening um, have your own studio in your house. And maybe you think you have the most dope setup, but what I'm going to do today is improve the dopeness of your setup. So I'm going to go over a few points, a few tips, few tricks, just things that you can do to improve your studio in your listening environment. First things first, the speakers. Let's start with the speakers. If you're mixing and mastering that, your home, you want to make sure that your speakers are in an equilateral triangle. What that means is the distance between you and your left speaker will be equal to the distance between you and your right speaker and will also be equal to the distance between the left speaker and the right speaker. So all lengths should be equal. This will ensure that what you are hearing is even. You have an, a, a, an equal balance between your left and your right. So make sure that you have an equal line, equilateral triangle. Um, Rich, you want to talk about that? Anything to comment on yeah, that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The equilateral uh, triangle, is, which is uh, probably you heard it before, called the sweet spot. Uh, you know what I'm saying? It's pretty much it's, it's designed for you to, uh, you know what I'm saying, get the, get the full aura of whatever you, you know what I'm saying, producing or mixing or whatever the case may be. And you can really catch up on the, uh, get your ears to catch the stereo image. Um, that's perfect. So, you know what I'm saying? When he's talking about uh, getting the equal distance on it, you can take measure out, you know what I'm saying, and, 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 and do, your, do your measurements on it because it's real critical. Because if you have one speaker, as to say, uh, above your computer monitor and one on the floor, and then, you know what I'm saying, or you have both of them sitting on the same thing, but one facing, you know what I'm saying, straight, you know what I'm saying, behind, or, you know what I'm saying, just straight in it, and the other one is off at a 45 degree angle, ain't no way you're going to get an accurate mix, uh, especially trying to uh, figure out the stereo image. So, um, that, I agree with that one. Just, you got to pay attention to the tweet spot. It, it, it works wonders for real. Totally, totally. And you'll hear that, that, that term thrown around a little bit more, the sweet spot. There's a lot of sweet spots and a lot of different things. Um, next yeah. thing, as far as the speakers go, if you can, now some of these you guys won't be able to do, but if you can, try to have your speakers off the back wall. I know it makes more sense to put your desk and push it all the way against the wall and put your speakers on there so you can utilize the room to its fullest amount of space. But that's not conducive to you mixing and mastering your music or creating music, doing beats, whatever it is that you do. So if you can, try to have those speakers at least six inches and even maybe to a foot, if you can, off the wall. Another thing about speakers is try to make sure that they are on risers. Um, you see those a lot. Orlex makes uh, the little tilted risers that you can buy. I'm not sure the, the specific name that they call them, but they are speaker risers. Um, just little foam pads. I have mine on just wall foam that I smash together to make a square just set them on there. And the reason why you do that, you don't want your desk resonating as it's creating the sound. Because if the desk is resonating, that's going to mess your whole mix up. And you're going to be able to hear screws and stuff rattling, and you don't want that. So the key to the speakers is you want to isolate them from that wall as well as isolate them from your desk. What do you think about that, Rich? Yeah, I totally agree with you on that one. Um, uh, there, there's a... Um, Specific uh, length as far as, um, you know, saying keeping speakers away from the wall. Not specific, but, um, you know, saying just a general rule of thumb. Uh, anywhere between three to four feet, you know what I'm saying? If you just in a tight space and you just, you know what I'm saying, you got to have it set up close to a wall or something like that, remember to try to keep the speakers at least three feet away from the wall. Um, that way, you know what I'm saying, uh, you got to think about the, the low frequencies going um, and, you know what I'm saying, um, the, the low frequency is being trapped against the wall, and you're not getting that full sound. Uh, also, too, it all depends on uh, to, uh, if the, the way your speakers are um, ported. If they, if they have a rear port, um, the airflow from the low frequency drop on that particular speaker is going to, you know, they going to muffle back to that um, back to the wall, um, and that way it, it, it it's going to kind of mess with your. Um, your, your, I guess your sweet spot of how you receive the low frequencies because um, it, the air doesn't have anywhere to escape. Um, vice versa with uh, front, uh, 
uh, for the speaker, um, Aaron had the way to pitch and you'll actually hear the right amount of low frequencies or whatnot, but um, with what uh, Corey was saying, you know what I'm saying, just keep them at least three feet away from the wall and uh, it should be good. Right on, man, right on. Um, the last point I want to make about speakers is uh, try to make sure that they are ear level. You'll see a lot of times in studios they lay them sideways, and that's so that both the tweeter and the woofer are ear level. Um, if that's not an option for you, try to make sure that, again, you sit in the quote-unquote sweet spot. How do you know what the sweet spot is? Put on your favorite song and kind of level those speakers up and down until it sounds absolutely perfect. Almost as though you got some headphones on. If you kind of hear some weird stuff going on, you got to move those speakers. So, again, as well as having the front and back distance correct, you got to have that up-down distance correct, too. So horizontal and vertical distance have to be good. Make sure that uh, those speakers are at ear level. What do you think about that, Rich? Yeah, uh, that's definitely correct. Uh, and also, when you have them uh, sideways uh, at ear level, you want to make sure that the no frequency uh, driver is uh is the one that's you know saying closer to the center. Uh, so you always want to have a tweeter on the outside or poking out. Should should they say so? You should have your the the big cone of the speaker uh towards the center, and then the tweeter on the outside. And the only reason why you do that is because of uh, uh it, it helps out with the stereo image uh again. You know what I'm saying you want to just picture um your mono source. Mono sources like your bass tones and stuff like that, uh, those are all pretty much model, uh, model sources or whatnot. So they're all going to fit in the middle of the stereo image versus your high frequencies, which is going to have more stereo detail to it. So it needs to be spread out evenly or whatnot. So uh, you got to look at it that way. Uh, I don't know the correct terminology on it, but uh, uh, definitely um, that's a rule of thumb. You always want to keep your low frequency drivers pointed to the center and your, uh, your tweeters pointed out to the high frequency. Uh, you know, they're out to the outside. Right on. Good point. Great point. Uh, the last thing I want to touch base on, because, again, I do have a lot of points um, that I do want to touch base on. It's just not enough time in the day to get to them all. But um, furniture, having furniture in your room. Furniture is k killing two birds with one stone. So not only do you have a spot for your your client to sit or for your friends and artists to sit, um, it also helps to dampen that room a little bit. Um, if you've ever moved into a house, before you move any furniture in, if you go into the room, you can hear uh, an echo in the room, a reverberation, so to speak, throughout the room. It's very clear. So without anything on the walls or any furniture, you're going to get that. So try to make sure, if you can, if you have the space, put some furniture in there. It's a cheap way to deaden the room as far as reverberations go. So try to have those there. Another thing is, if you're going to have furniture in your room, make sure that it doesn't have, it's not sensitive to uh, resonant frequencies. And I'm not sure if um, Trey or Rich have ever talked about resonant frequencies, but to sum up quickly, it is the frequency at which it, an object resonates. And when it resonates, it creates a sound. Um, I had a situation one time where my dresser was against my wall, and I had an 808 just knocking, knocking away. And I could hear a rattle, like a screw rattle against wood. And I couldn't figure out what it was. I literally just slightly moved that desk back just a little bit, and it completely resolved the issue. So try to make sure that you don't have anything in your room that will resonate or create any extra sounds when that bass hit. It's, it's mostly going to be something that's a bass frequency sensitive. So make sure that nothing's going to rattle, nothing's going to jiggle, have sturdy furniture, and um, make sure that uh, you, you're you're keeping in mind what you're putting in there. Make sure there's not too many reflective surfaces and things like that. So, Rich, what do you think about that? Yeah, of course. That was a that was a good point right there, man. Uh, about the furniture and whatnot. Uh, a lot of people. Uh, well, this is typical in a uh, home studio that you know saying you're probably in four closed walls. Uh, you know, saying um, and it's very symmetrical, or whatnot. Um, you know, saying you got an even, uh, even measurement on the left, right, front, and uh, in front and rear of you or whatnot. Uh, by using studio furniture, you can actually throw off the, I guess I call it the square room or whatnot. Uh, the reason why you want to throw off the, uh, the squareness of the room is because you have standing ways right there in the middle 
or you might have thin ways in a corner or, you know, saying three quarters deep in the room or whatever the case may be um, or whatnot. And those thin ways kind of create the resonant frequency that uh, not really, uh, not really the listener will hear just like you would hear any other tone coming out of your speakers. Um, I give you a perfect example. If you ever go into a room, get in front of your sweet spot, and you bang, bang, let's just say six steps, and you start hearing a lot of hum or the sub low frequency, let's just say around 60 hertz or something like that, you start hearing a lot of bass and stuff like that, more than likely that's a standing wave right there in that particular spot of your room. So by having furniture and setting it up in a unique way and throwing the squareness off in the room, um, that definitely eliminates the, uh, res- uh, the standing wave or the resonance in the room or whatnot, and uh, you definitely will... Um, you throw the sound waves going all kind of different ways, uh, you know, instead of they're all bouncing off the walls and becoming, they all coming to one center spot, uh, you throw them off and let them go different ways or whatnot. Because uh, what you got to think about it is uh, once that sound comes out of your speakers, you got to think it might hit, you know, saying the, the, it might hit the back left wall, then it might come back to the front, then it might come back to the back and then go to the side, to the side. And by the end, you know, saying with time, it's all going to center right there in the middle of the room or somewhere in your room. So with, um, you know, saying with, with furniture, you know, you can definitely throw that off, especially take care of your corners. If you got corners in your room, put them up, put something there. Um, you know, anything, <laughs> a chair, um, a dresser, make sure it's not touching the wall, and or uh, anything good to throw the room and not having to be a four by four. Four by four by four by four square. So uh, that's my recommendation on it. That's a good point right there um, about the furniture. Yeah, no doubt. And I'm going to get into standing waves um, in the next segment, but um, that about wraps it up for home studio recording. I will have more to say to you guys. I do have a lot more advice to give, but uh, due to time constraints, and like I said, I don't have all day. I'm going to uh, cut it right there, and we'll get into standing waves and stuff next time. But uh, we are going to head to our next commercial break at the moment. And we are back with the Producers Corner. Um, to that, the number, call in 214-989-6517. Uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, you know creating your, your, your website, your sales page, um, for a lot of you guys that are just looking for some direction, because I, I get a lot of tweets and emails about, you know, uh, how do I get started with selling my beats online? Uh, well, the thing you got to first off is do is um, I would probably go with my flash store. Um, that's who I use. There, there's other ways you can do it as well, really depending on who you have your website with. But my flash store, they basically give you a code that you just copy and paste into your page. And then you can pretty much set your prices at whatever you want to. Um, you can even do, like, if you don't want to do exclusives on your site, you can cut those up to where they have to contact you directly. Um, if they, you know, vice versa, if you want to do the same thing with, you know, maybe you don't want to sell these, you want to sell all exclusives, you can cut out leases uh, to where they, they would set the uh, possibly contact you for inquiry. The biggest thing you got to remember, though, where a lot of artists fall off is the keywords on the page. You got to try to think from a, a artist's perspective. What would an artist type in when he's going to Google? Um, free rap beats or um, buy rap beats, hip hop beats. You just got to start thinking of keywords that to fit in with the message that you're trying to get across on your website while they're looking. Um, also, you want to make sure your company name is pretty much all over your website because if you have a catchy name and you tell somebody something, uh, like I meet people all the time, uh, what's your website, majormusicent.com, so they just go and type in a search engine, you find everything come up that's related to your, your brand or whatever it is that you know, you, you're know going with. Um, that's That's going to be big because... As you start building more and more relationships, that's really all you have to tell people. You don't really have to do anything like business cards or hand out CDs or, or anything like that. Um, you, you could text that, you know, to somebody that you, you just meet or what have you. Um, 
And I would recommend having those keywords up on all of your pages. Um, the other thing is you want to actually kind of list, list how they can buy the bead or, you know, if they're going to see the discount on the second page, like if you're doing any type of bundle deals with your beads, um, because sometimes, believe it or not, some people have difficulty understanding how to do those things um, on the Internet. Um, the the last piece that I, I kind of want to get into, I actually kind of touched on it, is um, SEO. That, that, that was kind of the whole keyword part. Uh, but to take it a step further, um, that's, that's going to be kind of like the bread and butter when it comes to really marketing your, your website and getting a little bit deeper. The, the other piece is backlinks. Now, that's, that's a huge one um, that's kind of incorporated into the whole SEO thing because it's kind of like um, I haven't gotten to, like, Corey's page yet, but I, I'm going to get that one on the site too. But, like, Rich, for example, I, I have uh, some of Rich's content on my page from his website. So that way, you know, it, it, it's kind of building. It's kind of building both ways, basically, because whenever people look for one of us, they'll find the other one as well. Sometimes it really depending on whatever keyword they type in, producers corner icebreaker radio, that may come up. So just kind of incorporating those things. You got to really think on a larger scale when you're kind of doing those things to to kind of bring some more ideas to your website. Uh, fellas, what's your, what's your thoughts on some of the things that I said? I'm start off with you, Corey. You bring up some some very 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 good points. Um, one other thing that I wanted to add to what you were saying is, if you can, and this is not always the easiest thing to do, familiarize yourself with HTML. If you're going to make a website and you're going to have widgets and things like that, you have to know how to input these things. Unless you know of a website that automatically does it for you. But my website is a very simple website, um, not much that you can do with it because of the service that I go through. But because I know HTML very, very well, I'm able to create things that you normally wouldn't be able to create. So if you have the opportunity to know HTML, definitely pick up a book, read it. It's almost like reading Spanish at when you first see it, but it, it will save you a lot of money because you don't have to pay anybody to do those things for you. Um, another thing about just websites in general, just make sure it's easy to navigate and appealing to the eye. Don't have any harsh colors against each other and things like that. That'll scare people away before you even can get to having your you know, name there and branding yourself and doing those things. So you got to make sure you do the small things as well. Um, and another thing, um, make sure you just have all your important stuff near the top. Um, there's been plenty of studies that have been done to show where people look on websites, and most people do not make it to the bottom of the page. Um, they just lose interest. So if you can, have everything at the top. If you got your beats always, and you got a page for it, have the beat widget at the top. Then maybe have, you know, where they can pay next to that. And then maybe have some information about beats and policies under that because people are going to want to get to those beats first and purchase those beats, sadly, before they even read anything. So that's something to consider as well. Yeah, man, that's some, that's some definitely some great, uh, info. One other thing I kind of wanted to add in regards to just, uh, like having everything to the top in, in general, just try not to clutter up your pages as well, because there's a lot of producers that go on their pages and, you know, they have, they have everything on one page. <laughs> you got, uh, you got opportunities. I know you got opportunities to create, create more than one page on your website. Spread everything out. You know, if you have a sales page, maybe have a page for, like, if, if you have music you think with other artists, have a page for that. Um, have a page maybe with your blog. But just kind of make sure you have things separated so that people can actually navigate the website instead of having everything cluttered on one page. Uh, Rich, what's your thoughts on a lot of what we talked about? Yeah, man, um, you know what I'm saying? I'm still learning the, the whole online deal as far as, uh, you know what I'm saying, how to strategically, uh, put things in perspective when it comes to the internet. But, uh, I picked up on something with, uh, what Corey was, uh, uh, mentioning about the HTML code. So, um, you know what I'm saying? That's, um, it's pretty much, it's, it's a phenomenon with, uh, these free websites and whatnot. Uh, especially with the widgets, uh, I had my chance, I had run-ins 
with all of the HTML embedded codes and stuff like that last night, uh, trying to upload the mixtape. But it definitely, you need to know what it is because, uh, you know, saying a lot of these websites, they're uh, using this as a form of putting widgets up there for services, uh, like downloading a mixtape or downloading a beat uh, and purchasing it right there all in one little application using the HTML format. Uh, you know, and the HTML format also, it can also use on, you know, saying an Android devices or a mobile device or whatnot. So it's definitely, uh, you know, saying that's, that's a definitely useful thing to know and how to use it. Uh, you'll be amazed at what you can use and do with the HTML, uh, process. And also to, uh, tagging, uh, you know, saying just using keywords like DDOT said, uh, you know, saying those can go a long way, uh, you know, saying, as uh, far as, you know, just saying your name and, you know, saying, oh, yeah, uh, I've seen that around the way somewhere on the Internet. Oh, um, yeah, yeah, I, I've seen that name before, you know what I'm saying? But keywords, uh, and also using um, a service called Google Alert, uh, which uh, the guy that's behind the boards tonight, uh, which kind of turned us all on uh, for as uh, uh, tagging, you know what I'm saying, keywords. Uh, with Google Alert, you know what I'm saying, you can put in keywords for your brand or whatever you're promoting or whatever you're pushing, and uh, you can get email notifications uh, every time someone uh, Google your 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 name, your word, the particular service that you're out there promoting or whatever the case may be, uh, and you get these email notifications. And also, too, I ran into uh, Google Analytics, um, and that is pretty much, um, it keeps track of, you know, any type of website that you have, uh, YouTube um, or whatnot, Google Analytics uh, keeps track of how many people come on your site. Um, you can actually set up alerts like that as well. Um, something similar to a Google Alert, just a little bit, but you also keep up with tracks of how many people are going on your site or whatnot. But the whole deal of tonight's conversation with DDA, you know what I'm saying, just how to, you know what I'm saying, just market yourself on the Internet because it's, it's constantly evolving, you know what I'm saying. So six six to eight months down the road at the end of this year, you know, saying something's going to be a little bit different. So you definitely want to stay on top of that as far as how people can reach you the easiest and fastest way. So that's all I got right there, be that. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, you know, definitely some great insight, man. Uh, there's also a lot of literature um, available to where you can read a lot on SEO and, and keywording and, and just the whole um online marketing uh technique. Um I read a lot of books from Live All Beats. Uh they did actually a marketing book about three or four years ago and that's what kinda got me going on some of that stuff and, and you know, as you alluded to, definitely what you do right now paves the way for some of your stuff down the road and make things a lot easier. So yeah, great info.